right at the end of summer here in northern Ontario. I'm in Puckasaw National Park. Just left the shelter and comfort of Hattie Cove behind. I'm approaching the open lake, but it's a nice calm day, which is why I've taken this opportunity to get out on Superior and do this trip. I'm just hoping for some good fishing. I'm heading for the mouth of the White River, which is a significant tributary of Lake Superior, and I'm hoping the fish are gonna be there at this time of year. If you've never been to Puckasaw or never even heard of it, it's one of the most beautiful parks in Ontario. And there's a lookout trail right behind me there. You might even be able to see the lookout platform. And I hiked up it the first time. I think the first time I came here was 2015 or 14. And I looked down on the Lake Superior. It is so inspiring. Just all this crystal clear water, all these islands and points and bays that you can see. And I hoped to paddle it someday. And that day has finally come. So I'm very excited. There's a variety of fish to be had here, namely trout. Lakers are the most, lake trout, the most common. Brook trout and rainbow trout are also entirely possible. Pike and walleye, I rarely catch on Superior, but they, they have their habitats. But what I'm really going for here is salmon. I'm hoping that the salmon will be around the mouth of the white. But I'm always hesitant to say that now because I, salmon, oh, fish on. <laughs> Right on cue. <laughs> Feels pretty small. Oh, yep, still on. Salmon is probably my worst species to fish out of all the. Oh, I just lost it. Just popped off. Salmon is is yeah. I struggle. Every time I time I try and go do a salmon video, I fail. I'm hesitant to even mention it, but maybe this is my day. I'm into a protected little cove called Picture Rock Harbor, I believe. And there's a campsite here, which is great because it'll be the first place I can safely get the canoe on shore and get out to pee. Rounding the final corner into my campsite. There is a chance of rain this afternoon, so tarp up first. And these auto tensioning buckles on the amok tarp make it so easy. Absolutely love this tarp. Nice sight here, complete with a pet squirrel. Little red squirrel. Nice lofty pitch of the tarp. So because I've got no portages on this trip, I packed pretty heavily. Got my gas burner, a hobo stove, Kelly Kettle hobo stove. And then of course there's an open fire with a grill that I can use as well. Kind of like the three main options for having a fire out in the bush. This time I'm going to use the hobo stove, stick stove. There's an abundance of stick fuel here. It's dry, it hasn't rained in the last 24 hours at least. And it'll save my uh, gas fuel for one. That's one reason not to use that. And then this uses so much more wood fuel, uses up a finite resource on this, on this campsite. You need bigger logs, bigger impact. So for this one, this makes sense. I struggled with stick stoves initially. I had this cheap Ohuhu one off of Amazon. But I've learned you want to build it kind of like a, a wood stove with logs on the bottom and then start the fire on top, let it burn down into those logs. Just these little sticks that I cut into. They look like little logs, it's cute. Like a, a fireplace for that squirrel. And yeah, just, just build a little fire here and uh, I'll put some Dry cedar leaves in there, a little birch bark, and then just light it from the top down. I'm using cedar kindling as well. Cedar has low BTUs, but it burns very easily. It starts very easily. That's all I really need for now. Another part of the learning curve I went through with six stoves is once it's going, once you got a good little fire in there, Try to only put in bigger pieces, no more small stuff, otherwise it just clogs it up with ash. And once it burns down enough, put that grate on top quickly before it gets hot. Almost done. 
almost boiled. Got a really interesting comment recently where someone told me that using this is more environmentally friendly, in their opinion, than an open fire. They said an open fire uses, I think they said 50% more fuel and emits 500% more um, CO2 than this does. And that's an interesting point, and I appreciate it. Um, the, one, the whole reason I don't use these much, sparingly, is the whole process of extracting, shipping, packaging, and maybe recycling. Um, I have, I recycle re religiously. Like we, Aaron and I, we try really hard with recycling, we wash out all our containers and all that. I'm not trying to preach here, I'm just saying. And a lot of recycling, unfortunately, does not get used how we, we hope that it does. By comparison, wood fuel, while it might emit more CO2, is still an absolutely trivial amount in with the, the global issues that we're talking about. Me, or all campers worldwide, having a small fire uh, is, is, not, is not the problem. Oh yeah, stove is rocking. I don't know if you can see it, flames are bursting out of this side. Yeah, so it's really the packaging and the transportation that makes the difference for me. My fuel here, it grows all around. It grows back. If I could pluck some isobutane off of the trees here, I would gladly do this. This is very convenient. I could do it under a tarp very easily. Well, that's another thing I like about the stick stove. I can use it under the tarp. Tying on a new fluoro leader. Mine had gotten too short after being snipped a number of times. I use a full wingspan, probably five or six feet. I use Seaguar 100% fluoro leader material, 20 pound. I like the 20 for pike. Whenever I'm in pike waters, which is pretty much always, uh, the 20 pound leader really stands up to pike's teeth a lot better than, let's say, eight pound fluoro. I attach the fluoro leader to my mainline braid with a double uni knot, and then attach a little snap, a little crankbait snap to the end of the fluoro, just for easy switching of lures. I'm back on the water and I'll give you a look at the map. This is Puckasaw here. This coastline is the longest undeveloped coastline left on the Great Lakes. Very special. Incredible wilderness park. I'm just in this top portion here, the top end of the park, which is highlighted here on the other side. I started here in Hattie Cove and now I came down the coast, dipped into Plater Harbor a bit. There's a picture of rock. Came around, tried to access from this side, this campsite, but had to go around and access from here. Now, I'm going up the White River, up to a waterfall here, and there's a suspension bridge I'm hoping to hike up. No bites here. Hard to believe at the bottom of a falls like this. Can't see the falls yet, just it ends in a rapid here, and I'm hoping to get a better look on that suspension bridge. But there's a really cool campsite here on this polished rock. There's also a coastal hiking trail that goes along the coast of Puckasaw in addition to the water trail. And this one is designated as a hike-in trail. Some are designated for paddlers, some are for hikers. This is a pretty sweet one. In going over to this bridge, I just ran into a, a guy from Quebec and then a pair from Toronto area, Cortha Lakes actually. And I just found a little book. These are always funny to go through. Nicole and Carson, still kicking and still like each other. As long as you don't suffer from vertigo, this is a really cool spot.
was great. And I would love to see it at high water in the spring and also in the winter. It would be quite a lookout. Got something on. Feels quite small. About 200 meters downstream of the rapids slash falls. Very little fight and very little weight. But I'm curious. Probably a little pike. Oh, a little walleye. Oh, just got off. But I got eyes on him. That's the main thing. Trolling this deep husky jerk. Jointed and fire tiger. Sorry I couldn't give you a look, but it was a small walleye like this. Would have been a decent eater, but I have a meal to eat up tonight anyway with chicken in it, so kind of should eat that tonight. But tomorrow, I would love to get that fish. It's almost a great feeling losing a fish at the boat just as you get a, a look at it, because it's infinitely better than losing it without getting that little look. <laughs> that was funny. I uh, thought I was just about to snag as it was getting shallower. Saw the rod tip dip so slightly, figured I was just tapping bottom, and then pulled the rod out of the holder, and lo and behold, there's a fish on, probably, well, it looks like another walleye, but a bit better one this time. And he just popped off. That's, uh, that's what the viewers want to see. Wow. Pretty sharp. That's too bad. It wasn't a hog. Again, I got a look at it. I can live with that. It does nothing for the video. I'm sorry. Back to camp. Gonna finish setting up and have a quick dinner before I head out again onto the water. And it looks like it could be a pretty good sunset. I'm gonna set up a time lapse here. Coming back to the stove discussion, here's where I love a gas burner. I just need to reheat something. I made butter chicken yesterday. I just took a cup full, a couple pieces of naan bread. I just need to warm them up. I don't need to start a whole fire. I want it to be quick so I can get back to fishing. This I think is where it comes in handy. Butter chicken goodness. Okay. This was so convenient. Just about done setting up the hammock. And I've got dinner ready for me. Mmm. Mmm, I love garlic on so much. Mmm. I've got a beer. What have I got? I'll tell you in a sec. Mmm. Oh, it smelled good. Tastes good. Tastes like a beer you get at a hockey game. And that really makes me miss hockey games. It's starting to rain. Even more glad I used the burner for dinner. Under the tarp. Delicious meal. Good beer. I'm quite happy. Fishing. These overnight trips are nice. I don't do enough overnight trips. A lot of long trips, but... These short ones, they're so carefree. You go home the next day, you shower, enjoy the comforts of home. Something pretty sweet about it. The squirrel acts like he owns the place. I guess he does. Or she. Seen three hares today, saw a moose on the drive-in. Not a bad day. Beautiful evening. I was going to fish right here at the mouth, even a little on the 
coast side of it, but it is quite choppy there. So I'm just gonna come in into the mouth, upstream a little bit. I'm sure the fish will come there too if they're gonna come right here. So. Sean, I think it's another walleye. Let's see if I can manage to land it this time. Just gonna horse him in. Yeah! <laughs> one. Just a little walleye. Walleye gold. Thanks buddy. Again, would be a good eater, but just ate. It's getting dark. Tomorrow. That one's on the inline spinner. Gave up the last 15 or 20 minutes of fishing for this sunset. I had to come back to camp for this view. I knew it would be a perfect view. The clouds looked like they'd be set up for a perfect dramatic sunset. Totally worth it. Just an FYI, this isn't color graded. I don't even know how to color grade. It's a Pretty amazing sunset. Just doing a little light reading before bed. Park gives you these for their orientation. But look at this guy. He looks like he's on the planet Mars and he's about to eat me and everyone I know and love. first for me. Never had a bear locker before to use, but they supply it here at Pakasa at a lot of the sites, even a lot of the backcountry hiking and canoe in sites. And just locks up here in the front. And unfortunately, there are a lot of black bears in the area. That's not unfortunate. That's great. But in the town where I live in, very close to here, we have black bears in town all the time. They run on the streets, they eat the garbage, they're like our raccoons, and they're considered a nuisance by most, but uh, it's not their fault. Humans have to do a good job of, of keeping away food, food sources. Think about bears like a, a lab. If a lab can smell food, it is going to vacuum it up. And a bear, which has to survive a long winter, is all the more hungry, so great that they have these and it was uh, it's nice that they're taking every precaution to avoid that scenario here in Pakasa. So this morning I'm going to cook on an open fire. I had uh, the gas stove, the stick stove and this is the perfect use case for an open fire. I want to cook a pot of tea, I want to cook with the frying pan, cook up some eggs and I want the warmth. It's a chilly morning so this is the time that I would like to use a, an open fire. Transport eggs out here. I just put them in the, a plastic container in their carton. You just cut off a portion of the carton, wrap it in a tea towel. You get those little egg cases, but I just prefer this when space is not a concern at all. Almost forgot I've got some real cooked bacon bits. Doing these breakfast burrito style. Oh yeah. 
Unless I get fish today, this will be most of my calories till I get home. Got a couple of granola bars, that's it. Mm. Another stupidly comfortable sleep in the drummer. Brought the ultralight on this on this trip, as you can see. It's quite see-through. Such a strong but thin material that you can see through it and a hammock is great because you get a wide view under the tarp as opposed to being within a tent where you're only looking at the inside of a fly. But with the ultralight you can even see right through it so it just it's almost a full 360 aside from the pad underneath. Part of this hammock's design is a pad. Some hammocks you don't need, most hammocks are traditional gather down hammock, you don't need a pad. But for this one, which, where you sleep perpendicular to your ridge line here, it needs a pad for structure. But the pad adds so much comfort, you flat, it's a flat sleep, and the pad, if it's insulated, which this one is, adds extra warmth. So on a chilly night, that makes a massive difference. You're not prone to the cold butt syndrome that uh, a traditional hammock can give. There are ways around that in a traditional hammock too, but for this one it's it's integrated into part of the design. Much to my chagrin, no action here at the mouth this morning. And there's a south wind picking up, and I checked the Zolio, my uh, SATCOM device, for the weather. There's no uh, regular signal here, so I'll get the weather through that. And yeah, the, the south wind is start, supposed to start picking up soon, so that means adverse conditions um, along the coast. So I'm in a canoe, I'm in an open canoe. I do have my dry suit if needed, if the conditions warranted it. So I'm gonna start making my way, way back. I'll be trolling. Hopefully I'll luck into something to salvage this little fishing trip. But yeah, I know better. I know this lake well enough to, to know when my welcome is run out. Another one. Fish on. Feels small. What do we got? Interesting. Oh, oh, oh. It's going like crazy. Could be a small brookie. No, Laker, I think. Whoa. Oh my goodness. That was a little sloppy. Where are you? Oh, it's a salmon! It's a salmon! It's a little pink salmon! <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah! I got a salmon! I got a salmon! Oh man, this is sweet! What did I say? I never get salmon! I never get salmon! So I'm not backlit here. Get my hands good and wet. Look at that. Just a little salmon. Oh man, that is so beautiful. Oh, and now the decision to keep it or not. I'm just gonna leave it there in the net in the water while I think about it. It's just such it's, there's nowhere to get on land here for a shore lunch. I'll I'll pan around in a sec, you'll see what I mean. I could take it home, but Aaron and I are having nachos tonight, and I'm really, <laughs> I'm intent on that, so, <laughs> anyway, I gotta think here, so I'm gonna keep it, thank you, I'm gonna dispatch it now, just a beautiful little pink salmon, I'm so grateful, it's gonna be delicious. Fresh salmon. Got it on this little crankbait. Finally found a nice little spot to cook this up. Gonna clean it now. One last look before it becomes food. 
so grateful to this guy. It's made an incision behind the gill plate, and then an incision just along the spine, and then I'll hug the rib cage like I do for most species except for pike. Two fillets, got some belly meat over there as well. Oh, it's gonna be good. Doing it skin on, it's nice with salmon. little salmon spice. Got some in my kit. Never had a better opportunity to use it. Oh, oh it smells absolutely exquisite already. As soon as it hits the pan. And yeah, here's that little belly meat with the uh, uh, pelvic fin. Nutrition too. It's time. My first bite of fresh, just out of the lake salmon. First time in my life. Wow, that is better than steak. Oh, that is exquisite. Oh man, it tastes as good as it smelled. Mm. Oh, thank you. Oh man, here's another great use case for the burner. It's illegal to have fires outside of designated fire pits in Takasaw National Park. So I couldn't have a fire. And just filming, cleaning the fish, getting everything out of the barrel. Like it's just one thing less to do to, uh, to get this going and get this in me. It'd be tough to get firewood here even if I could have a fire. I'm very distracted here. Look at that. Absolutely exquisite. everything I wanted and more. Perfect little overnight. Coastal scenery, that suspension bridge, sunset, stargazing, and sunrise were all amazing. And my little salmon finale. So happy. The scenery is just incredible here in Polkwood Harbor too. Eagle flies off. At least the fourth one I've seen. On top of the hares. Even the squirrel was cute. <laughs> and the moose on the drive-in. What a little trip. Puckasaw, what a special place. And a loon's calling. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Spoiled to death. Spoiled to life. Living, baby. Bit of a fairy tale. Back to Hattie Cove. Just say it again. That was an incredible little overnight trip. Now I go home. I see Aaron. We make nachos and we watch some smutty TV. I know a bachelor in paradise. <laughs> I think this place is going to be savage. My girls have the roses. A lot of people are looking into SATCOM devices these days for their backcountry camping trips, or it could be work or your cabin where you're offline and you need to communicate. And in Canada, the Zolio costs 25 bucks a month as the base plan. 
But they just introduced a new feature called Location Share Plus for an extra $750 a month, which is not much. It gives you unlimited check-ins. So you can use the check-in button on the device as much as you want, or you can check in on your phone, either one if you pair it. But it also gives you a bread crumb trail that people at home can use to view where you are. And it even, uh, it'll show you this, these yellow ones here on the screen. That means that uh, I didn't move. So if someone back home was seeing this and they noticed that I didn't move for a long time in an unusual place, that could actually trigger them to try and contact me and see if I need help. And if I don't respond, you know, well, that, that might give them a clue. Uh, it also shows campsites. Like, there's actually uh, quite amazing data here on these map box outdoors map tiles. Really neat. Um, and you can download these for offline use as well. So for that $750 a month, you can get a lot of value out of this. Unlimited check-ins, uh, the offline maps, and uh, this breadcrumb trail. Pretty sweet. There's one spot in particular that gives me a bit of concern, which is Campbell Point there. The map says Reflection Wave Danger. The park staff warned me of that risk as well. Reflection waves, if you're not familiar, when you get a wavy day and you got, a, let's say, a really rocky face to the coast, the waves hit it and they bounce back, reflecting, reflection waves. And the real challenging part to that is sometimes they don't reflect straight back they can reflect at an angle and then you get this crisscrossing of waves which can be much harder to navigate through especially in an open canoe and then as those waves bounce back and they meet oncoming waves they also just peak and kind of erupt so you get higher waves more unpredictable waves uh, just turns manageable waves into something much nastier don't see any garbage on the site, that's nice. Only thing is uh, some of the birch have been peeled and they could easily die now, which is too bad. Lots of other ways to start fires besides birch bark. Dead cedar leaves, dead spruce needles. You can baton some fine splits of softwood. Lots of other ways to do it. The ideal and safest birch bark is the one that's on the ground. And you can also very lightly peel away uh, birch bark that's falling off. Look at that little guy. <laughs> yeah, these cedar leaves, dead cedar leaves, they'll help me start a fire too. On the same note, it's nice to go a little away from your campsite to get firewood. It's best practice, I guess. This dead spruce will give tons. Big swell coming through here easily be two feet high but very gentle and these things never come across on camera sometimes I'll say oh we got two foot swells today and then someone who wasn't there says where were the two foot swells I didn't see any they really don't come across on camera if you've ever filmed rapids waves or swells on non-breaking swells you'll, you'll know what I mean but easy paddling very gentle here comes another one that was not quite so big but Probably looks like nothing on the camera, right? 